In April of 2006, the Wilkes County Commissioners appointed a committee to work toward collecting, preserving, and making Wilkes County history available in DVD format, and to prepare to celebrate the county's 230th birthday in 2008. You are asked to share your history by contacting the Wilkes Community College Library. Indications are that a race of Native Americans inhabited this section of the state long before the Cherokee. During the Archaic period, about 500 BC to 500 AD, the inhabitants were hunters and gatherers and had not begun agriculture or started the manufacture and use of pottery. In a 1990 dig by Wake Forest University on the Yadkin River in Roaring River, North Carolina, they stated that the Indians were Siouan and had interfaced between the two cultures, the Cherokee and Siouan. One research objective that Wake Forest has been interested in since we've been doing this work is looking at the nature of the boundary which lies somewhere between where we're sitting right now and um, upstream on the Yadkin with the, the Cherokee versus the uh, Siouan. One thing that we are finding right now is that the pottery is a little bit different. Uh, although it looks very Siouan in many ways, it has certain characteristics that uh, we've never seen before. And we think that this may have something to do with the influence of the Cherokee a little further to the west, uh, who of course had a, a very different uh, cultural system and social organization. So uh, that's one thing that we're going to be studying as we look at what we can excavate from this site. When we came to this site was to try and understand the geological processes that uh, created this and the geological processes that uh, affected the uh, the archaeological deposits. This is a, a test unit that is at a fairly low elevation on the site and we can see from these sands here that it's been flooded. This is, these are coarse river sands that had to be laid by fast flowing water and then below that are some finer grain silts and clays that also were laid by, by water so it's fairly clear that this portion of the site has been has been flooded, has been cut, and that's probably why we don't uh, find in this area of the site any of the features such as the trash pits and, and uh, uh, house posts and such that we see on the higher elevations. Uh, so the site has been affected by the river, but we're fortunate that uh, on the knolls and rises here, we do get better preservation of the, of the remains. And apparently, uh, because they were horticulturalists, they preferred these loose sandy soils in the floodplains, as well as some of the resources that you can find there, in addition to the soil, uh, such as you know the fish and the shellfish, the different birds that would be along the waterways. Um, and I suppose that it would have something to do with trading in that a river is a natural traveling course. The Siouan groups that included the Eno Indians in the Orange County and the Sara Indians in Stokes County were loosely united by a similar language. Artifacts found at the Dig in Wilkes indicate that Siouan Indians lived there around 1400 A.D. The uh, Siouan language is distantly related to the Sioux, which everyone's heard of, they're Plains Indians. Uh, but. Uh, North Carolina has three major linguistic groups, the Algonquin speakers along the coast, and the Siouan Indians of the Piedmont, and then the Cherokee of the mountains, which uh, speak a language unrelated to Siouan. It's related, interestingly, to Iroquois in the Northeast. We're interested in, in why these Indians succumb to the European uh, invasion so easily. The Cherokee, for example, held out uh, well into the 19th century and effectively stopped any white encroachment into their territory. Uh, and essentially that's what, that's what our research has been focused on, the social organization uh, of these groups, how they got along with one another, how they traded with one another, how these Siouan speakers interacted with these groups that were completely different from them in terms of 
customs and language and, and uh, probably even the way their societies were organized. Very different systems. How, how did they get along? Were they enemies, implacable enemies? Did they fight or did they trade? Did they have you know, love feasts? Who, how, what, what did they do when they, when they met these, these other groups? And in fact, that's, that's what brought us to Wilkes County. The pottery indicates that there was considerably more contact with people to the west. A key clue is the use of soapstone in pottery. Because occasionally we find items like marine shell, which obviously has to come from the coastal area, uh, maybe Florida, or, or perhaps just along North Carolina or South Carolina coasts. We really don't know for sure. But anyway, it, as you know, today it's a long drive to get to uh, the ocean, so these items will be coming over long distances. So they do have some contact with people, distant peoples. Other things that we, we uh, know about them is uh, their diet. And we find, as I said, they're agriculturalists. And we have found already at this site um, a corn cob fragment, charred corn cob fragment, um, and lots of corn kernels. So obviously they were growing maize here. Uh, I've also seen one bean, which is highly unusual. We haven't seen many uh, in any of the sites that we've excavated. And undoubtedly, they were also growing uh, squash and some native uh, seed crops, goosefoot, uh, amaranth, some weed. Probably they were eating maypops um, and just various sort of weedy plants that grow in the area. Um, we also have recovered a lot of deer bone from this site. Uh, not much turkey bone, in fact I'm not sure I've seen any here, which is a common constituent on other sites that we've excavated. We usually get a lot of turkey bone. Um, some fish scales have turned up in the flotation, so they were obviously taking fish. Uh, and freshwater shells, so apparently they were collecting shellfish as well here, so they had a pretty varied diet. And a lot of, um, I've noticed in one of the trash pits, a lot of nutshell came out, walnut, hickory, and acorn. And you can imagine that that would be uh, a large part of the diet probably in the fall when those foods are, are available. One, one consequence of living along these floodplains and using them uh, for cultivating their plants is that this, the, the groups of people probably were fairly small because the floodplains are small. If you look at a, at a map of the Yadkin Valley, uh, look at the size of the floodplains or bottoms, you'll see that they're, they're really not very large compared to other major rivers in the southeastern U.S., especially in the Gulf Coastal Plain where you get enormous, well, the extreme example would be the Mississippi Valley where floodplain will go for miles and miles and miles across uh, to be that wide. Uh, so these small floodplains would only support small groups. And this may be one reason why we don't get very complicated social systems here involving uh, permanent leaders that uh, uh, built had, or had their followers build uh, mounds and uh, uh, trade for all sorts of expensive trinkets to hang around their neck to show that, that this is indeed the supreme leader, etc. Uh, these people had a fairly simple social organization as far as we can tell. Uh, no one person, or family, or group had any permanent leadership position. Everyone seems to have, have uh, had about the same amount of, of wealth, at least to start with. Some may have been better hunters and, and gained a little prestige that way, but no permanent leadership role vested in a, a lineage, a family, or something of that sort. Pottery retrieved during the woodland period can be found on display at the Wilkes Heritage Museum in Wilkesboro. Okay, here we have a piece of decorated tempered clay ceramic. It uh, is from the early woodland Indian period and it dates back to 1000 to 1600 AD. The material that it was made out of inc includes steatite, crushed quartz, and fine grit. And uh, the woodland people in Piedmont, North Carolina, they wrapped a paddle with heavy fabric and pressed design into the wet clay to make the little indentations that you see there. Then our next piece is also another decorated tempered clay ceramic piece. 
and uh, it, it also dates back to the early Woodland Indian period. And it's cord marked for decoration. It was, uh, the paddle was wrapped with a cord and then impressed into the wet clay, whereas with the first piece, we had just a piece of fabric. And here we have a lug handle piece. You can see the little handle sticking out there. And this dates back to the early Archaic period, circa 4000 to 2000 BC. And this is actually made out of soapstone. This item is part of a handle that came from soapstone carved bowl, probably of oval shape. And next we're going to talk a little bit about a few of the, the clay pipes that I've brought. This is a clay trade pipe, late Carolina woodland period, 1600 to 1800 AD. This is uh, the piece that I mentioned had a little face on the very end, the human face. And here we have a large stone pipe, um, very little decoration at all. This is actually made out of clay and stone, square Whoa. pipe. And this is, uh, dates back to 1000 to 1600 AD. The Indians did not have a wheel like the modern day potters did. They used co the coil method. They would start with rolls of uh, clay and circle it and then use a, a paddle or their hand and smooth the inside. And sometimes they would use a corn cob or a net to make these designs. This is a, de uh, 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 a knotted net impressed pot that was recovered along the New River in uh, uh, Allegheny County, North Carolina and it has got some slight restoration around the rim. It was found uh, broken. But this is a, 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 uh, a knotted net pottery uh, item, and it dates to the Mississippian period. And the Mississippian period followed the woodland period, whereas the, the Indians became more sophisticated, if you will, in their way of life. They, they were able to adapt better than the woodland Indians. They had more of a, a social gathering and a leader and things of that nature. I didn't figure I'd rush you, but I just wanted you to know I wanted you to take your time now. I have to take my time. It's going to rain. <laughs> You'll ruin it. Yeah. But... I was thinking in terms of getting you too tired, though. I wasn't thinking in terms you might bust that thing. You sure got to know how to use that hatchet, ain't you? Yeah, I'll use it. Made a lot. Well, back when you was a boy growing up, everybody knew how to use an axe, though, didn't they? I guess. Yeah. So don't like that. Put the animal, they put you down with that, didn't have no oil. They put animal fat in there. Uh huh. And then they, when they let it, let it burn as long as they want to, then they put that on there, put it out. Turn that up towards me a little bit. You've got a, a piece of cloth in there, haven't you? In a wick. Uh huh. But what would they use? A piece of leather or a piece of skin or something like that? Something though, I don't know exactly what. <laughs> well, whatever would act as a wick, moss would do it, wouldn't it? Yeah. 